Hello and welcome back to Bookish. Today's video is going to be a review of Detransition Baby by uh, Tori Peters. I read this as a part of a buddy read uh, with three other booktubers, Mark Nash, uh, Roz from Scala Dandling About the Books, and Xena uh, from Beating Around the Books. And that buddy read was amazing, uh, in which, you know, we didn't always agree and we felt free to kind of uh, point, counterpoint one another's uh, arguments. Uh, and it was just really good. And so a lot of the insights I want to try to share with you here in this review are actually uh, a product of those discussions. So plot-wise, Detransition Baby basically follows three characters. Uh, Reese, a trans woman. Uh, Ames, a man who has detransitioned, uh, who had been a trans woman. And Katrina, uh, a cisgendered, straight, Asian-American woman. Uh, and how they interact with one another. So without giving away any spoilers, because I think these are things you learn relatively early on, Reese and Ames, who when he was a trans woman was uh, Amy, were in a relationship with one another. Something happened in that relationship, uh, and in part, as a result, Amy detransitioned to became Ames. Ames goes to work, I believe, in an advertising agency. His boss is Katrina. He enters in, into a sexual relationship, an affair uh, with Katrina, and surprisingly, uh, he uh, impregnates uh, Katrina, and she's going to have his baby. And so the plot of the book really follows, you know, these characters as they try to kind of follow Ames's plan to make themselves into a unique family unit of three, uh, of three people who are going to work together to raise this baby uh, that he and Katrina uh, are going to have, and they're going to try to bring Reese, uh, this trans woman who Ames had been in a relationship with, in uh, to help them parent this child. That is complicated and confusing, and most of the story really revolves around learning about those characters and learning about their efforts to make that kind of family unit work. So there were a couple of things, a number of things that came up in our discussion uh, about this book that, that I thought were really important and, and worth making a part of my review. First, because Detransition Baby is, I believe, the first own voices book uh, about uh, the community of trans women, the experience of being a, a trans woman. One of the questions that I had all the time in reading the book was, is Peters including this information for cisgendered readers like me to educate us or not? And this may be indeed a question that I should be able to move beyond and maybe one day I will, but it just kept occurring to me because I kept learning things from the book, things I didn't know. Uh, as Mark said in our discussion, I gained insights, several uh, very big insights that I never had and I would not probably have gotten if I hadn't read uh, this book. And because I believe that all reading provides us with some education and we learn from all reading, primarily I think the the purpose of reading fiction is to gain a greater appreciation for humanity and all its diverseness, and yet that we're all part of one human uh, group and that reading builds empathy and compassion. Because all those things are true, you know, every book I read, I feel like I learn something from. So whether Peter's intended or not, which probably isn't a very important question, I did learn a lot from this book. Uh, I gained insights I wouldn't have had, and for me, uh, you know, that is one of the great things about the book. One of the things about the book which makes it uh, definitely uh, a worthwhile read. Uh, there were several points in which uh, my buddy readers and I on this book uh, had uh, different ideas or different thoughts, but I think on the whole we all liked it. I think they're all going to be, or mo many of them are going to be posting reviews soon, and if when they do, I will try to remember to put links to their reviews of Detransition Baby uh, in the show notes of my video because I think looking and, and kind of comparing all those reviews would probably be a good way of, of really introducing yourself uh, to the book if you're thinking about reading it beyond just, you know, hearing one person's uh, point of view. One of the things that struck me about the book uh, and the buddy reading experiences was that 
different types of readers, or people who read primarily for different reasons, uh, had different reactions to the book. Now, I think all my buddy readers liked it, but for different reasons, and we all kind of seem to have slightly different opinions about what worked and what didn't work in the book. So, a while back, Courtney Ferreter made uh, a, um, a tag video called the Self-Aware Reader Tag. And the first question was, well, you were supposed to answer kind of what kind of a reader are you? Do you read for plot? Do you read for writing? Do you read for character, uh, character development, etc.? And I really think, I'll leave a link to Courtney's video down below too, I really think that that, that first question is a real clue to how people are going to react to the book. So let's say you're a plot reader. Let's say that you the thing that interests you most in a book is the plot. I think if you are a plot-driven reader, you're going to find Detransition Baby to be frustrating. And I'll talk about some of the things that I saw as weaknesses in the book, and most of them to me had to do with plot. Uh, if you are a reader who uh, reads because you love writing on a sentence-by-sentence -sentence level, I'm, I'm separating writing from plotting here. If you're a reader who, who reads to find great examples of writing on a sentence-by-sentence -sentence level, you know, on a paragraph-by-paragraph -paragraph level, I think you're going to be have kind of a roller coaster with this book. There are some places where I think the writing is very good, and uh, Peters creates images and scenes and communicates emotions in ways that really resonate with me and there's some places where I just thought the writing was not particularly good at all. So it's kind of up and down for the writing. But if you're a character driven reader, if you're a reader who the most important thing in a book to you are the characters uh, and you know being interested in who these characters are, then I think you're going to have a really positive reaction overall uh, to detransition baby because to me the strength of the book is in the characters. So real quickly to run down a few of the things that I see as kind of real weaknesses in the book aside from the fact that occasionally there are just sentences that I don't think are particularly good sentences. There are other things as well that 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 kind of bothered me and again a lot of these things have to do with uh, plot related things. There are some coincidences including one big coincidence which I won't give away here which to me seemed overly contrived. Um, um, and there's some other things like that where it seems like uh, information uh, or things happen in, in a completely contrived way. Now, uh, as uh, Roz pointed out, you know, contrivance and, and Mark pointed out and Zena pointed out, contrivance is kind of a part of writing fiction, but to me, there were a few too many things and there was this one big thing felt a little a little too contrived for me. Uh, a way, it felt like just a way for Peters to kind of resolve uh, a complicated situation she'd set up. I won't go any further than that. Additionally, one of the things I think we all agreed on is that Peters occasionally digresses by including these kind of big chunks of information uh, which may or may not really advance the plot or our understanding of the um, of the characters at all. To me these just seem like cool things that Peters learned or thought about and wanted to put in the book. And, and they're kind of to me shoehorned in there uh, whether they advance the uh, plot or the characterization or not and in some cases they, they for me, uh, prove to be uh, kind of distracting. And then finally one of the things I found most frustrating is there are several occasions in which Peters essentially kind of uses uses pop culture things uh, and things I consider to be really ephemeral pop culture things like TV series from the 90s as a way of characterizing or, or setting up kind of plot points. And to me, I felt that was a weakness. Not everybody agreed with me uh, about that or about any of those things. But what I thought was good was that, as I said, occasionally I thought the writing was good. I thought Peters has the ability to create scenes and to communicate emotions in ways which are really effective. Going back to the first point I made, there are some really brilliant uh, insights uh, into uh, the lives of uh, of some trans women, I suppose, uh, and uh, or of the trans community that, that were just really brilliant, and I, I really appreciated that. But for me, the strength of the book was the characters. One of the things I really, and this is something, you know, looking back on it, I, I really appreciate more. I like the way in which the characters all evolve over the course of the novel. We don't get 
with the three main characters, uh, we don't get just a flat representation of who they are. Some of the secondary characters, yes, but we don't get this flat, unchanging idea of who they are. That who those characters are and what we think about them evolves all the way to the very last page uh, of the book and I think that's something of achievement and in addition to that particularly with Reese and with Katrina uh, the mother of Ames's child Katrina and Reese uh, Ames when he was Amy's uh, love interest or lover their relationship with one another really reveals a lot about those two characters and you know, I think it's an achievement to create uh, ideas about characters through interaction between characters rather than just through kind of dumping information about the characters in the book. Some of that has to be done, but I really appreciated that. And again, it's the characters who are, I think, the most interesting part of the book. Uh, Katrina is, you know, seems determined to do the right thing, even though she oftentimes doesn't. Whenever she doesn't, she attempts to correct that. She attempts to uh, she's sorry, she feels remorse about the things that she's done wrong, and she wants to set them right. Uh, occasionally, it feels like she can't help but, you know, kind of bumble and then correct herself. But she's determined to get it right, whether it's uh, the idea of motherhood or embracing the idea of motherhood or embracing this idea of entering into this relationship with a trans woman and her detransitioned uh, boyfriend lover who's the father of her child she's determined to make it work and whatever it is she embraces it and she self-corrects and she's so determined to do it right but we never <laughs> we never know and she never knows in the book if it's going to work out right or if she's done it right and so she's constantly having to evolve and oftentimes it's Reese who kind of knocks her off the rails in small ways and in big things and forces her to readjust Ames was the character I liked the least for almost the entire uh, book. Ames felt like, to me, someone who was just shirking responsibility. Uh, someone who uh, took the easy way out. Uh, and this is a really harsh thing to say, but keep in mind I'm, con I'm talking about in the context of the book. Uh, he detransitioned in part because he says uh, being a trans woman was just too hard. Um, he... Uh, he fathers this child accidentally uh, and then wants to find a way where he's not solely responsible for uh, the role of father or uh, parent other than the mother. But you learn a lot about why that, why that is true. And while in, in some ways he is the most complex character, and again, we never really get a clear resolution of what he's actually like, like we really never get for anybody. But he is at once... Uh, he, he, at the same time that he knows that he is, in fact, a woman, and that's why he transitioned, he also, and I'm referring to him as he here, because for, in the book, in the real time of the book, he's Ames, who's detransitioned, he also is really comfortable in that male body in which he was born, and he has kind of nostalgia, and he falls back on that, and I that really made him really complicated and hard to pin down. But the best character in the book uh, is Reese, uh, the trans woman. And my goodness, she is complicated. Uh, she is a trans woman living and embracing the full trans life, determined not to compromise on being a woman at all, that she is going to embrace being a woman, that she is not going to fall victim to the things that... Uh, other trans women fall victim to, for instance, uh, violence and suicide, uh, etc. That she's not going to do that, but in the process uh, of doing that, she makes decisions and does things that are that are frustrating, and I would just say straight out foolish sometimes. And she hurts other people, and uh, at the same time, she is. Um, a kind and compassionate character who wants to mother other people and help other trans women. And what she wants most of all, and one of the things she's discovered as a trans woman she wants most of all, is to be a mother. She actually wants to be a mother. And of course, she is aware of the reality of exactly how difficult uh, that is. But this is what she wants, and this is kind of what brings her into this relationship uh, with Ames uh, and Katrina, her desire to be a mother uh, in, in every possible sense of the term. 
is what brings her into that. But she is incredibly frustrating because it almost seems like that whenever her life is reaching some kind of stability, which might actually make that um, her dream or desire to be a mother possible, she takes some action or some action from her past seems to upset that and to uh, threaten to ruin everything. But she is uh, a, an incredibly interesting and I think incredibly valuable character uh, in terms of uh, American fiction, literature in general. And, and I think learning about her and her experiences and getting to know her is one of the best things about reading the novel. Anyway, uh, I would definitely encourage you uh, to read the novel. I think it was good, uh, not great, uh, but I do think that it is a novel that should be widely read. Anyway, there you go. There's my review of Detransition Baby by Tori Peters. Look forward to your comments in the comment section below, and as always, thank you for watching.